All right, guys. So today's Tick Propaganda Podcast, Season 2, Episode 1, Part 2. So that's our first time we're split up. Um, uh, episode up. But, you know, yesterday I had to run. So as promised, today Rob and I are getting back together. And we're going to be covering the rest of Asia. Maybe going over some things that we missed in Europe. Anyways, so we're going to start off with um, a war. I think that was the plan for yesterday. Um yeah, then this is not looking good. <laughs> Why? So you are our Asia expert mod. Go ahead. I don't think I should be an expert for anything, but I'll try my best. Well, Mewar had a pretty bad coalition fight against him. I think it was um, it was Malwa that fired it, but basically every single miner around Mewar declared war on him. So, like, I guess I spoke to him a little bit earlier. He said his biggest mistake is that he didn't uh, ally Janpur earlier on, and that is true. Usually, that is the uh, the mistake. We can definitely see the on the diplomacy screen that he's missing course. I mean, he looked pretty big, and I thought we're gonna have you know a repeat of nice Muari in India, but this might not be the case. Um, and. He has several choices here, is that either he's going to do diplomacy with uh, Timurids, he can also pop the Golden Age um, to... Uh, I think I'm yeah, he can pop the Golden Age in order to ensure a little bit of their survivability, but because the Age bonus is ending, and this is probably one of my favorite Ages to play as Muar, is because if you pop the Golden Age, and then also you have the Adaptive Combat Terrain bonus as Muar, you can place, uh, since your capital is located on the hill, and he should have probably moved the capital to Mewar, actually, the Gold Province. I think that was a mistake. Uh, he could have had a lot of forts that were just on hills with a plus one. But, I mean, that's just for this age, you know. So, this age is yeah. passing. Uh, what, what are your predictions? <sighs> well, it really much, it really depends on Timmy. Mm -hmm. uh, if, Timmy decide, if Timmy decides to go in i don't think there's much that the indians can do to keep me what alive mm -hmm. so like, at from this your point perspective, even if mm -hmm. go ahead yeah at, at this point even if timurids loses the war i mean might still die anyway well maybe maybe but i see that the indians are actually tech seven right uh but as we looked at the timurids yesterday he has a lot of manpower he has the economy he also has the uh bonuses um for another 20 years now my question is to you here: uh, Do you have any, uh, you know, diplomatic relations in the war, or did you guys figure anything out for midweek diplomacy at all? Not with me, not with me, what in mm -hmm. particular? We are we were allied, however, before, and I don't see much reason for that to change into antagonistic relationship. Mm -hmm. Because he told me earlier on, when the, before the uh, session ended, that actually uh, uh, Vijayanagar rivaled him, right? Uh, so. Yeah. So yeah, Vijayanagar that... is rival to both Mewa, to both other India players. Interesting power move by Vijayanagar. I, of course, do not agree to that at all. Uh, I think that's a very shitty move, to be honest with you. But that is hmm. to to the player's defense. Uh, he took over the nation from another one who rage with it, mm -hmm. and um, he wasn't even certain he was going to stay playing Vijayanagar, so he oh. didn't actually want to do any diplo. Oh, interesting. I mean, that's kind of strange not to do Diplo still and preserve the country. So, okay, well, we'll take that into consideration. But, I mean, well, he is playing Vijayanagar, so... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, India is might be in trouble from Timmy's side, but other... I mean, Ming hasn't yet been really eaten up by Manchu. Mm -hmm. Khmer is friendly and still has plenty of land to eat around him. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll get to Khmer. So, okay, so we we'll look at Mewar. Uh, Mewar um, gonna be Tech Seven soon, but a little bit of quantity econ ideas. But he really didn't get lucky with his rulers uh, because I believe that the Mewarian ruler dies in uh, 1458, the really good one. Uh, and I guess he just didn't have luck with the rulers. And Mewar really needs something unless you have the gold mine. But his biggest mistake, of course, as said, uh, was the gold mine. Uh, well, not moving the gold mine, and of course the coalition fucking triggering. Um, yeah, that so was that's that's just not ideal. Not ideal at all, but yeah, maybe more of a juggling. Anyways, we'll see what Mewar does. Uh, you know, as I as I understand, he's an experienced player, so maybe yeah, he's he... also Hindu, which I hadn't noticed before. 
I mean, wh what else would you be as Mawar? Ah, uh, fair enough. You started as Hindu. I mean, you can convert, but the majority of the land is Hindu. So, like, uh, I don't well, see yeah, the point Muslims of Muslims don't Muslims don't lose any. Um, Muslims don't lose anything in India for uh, owning Hindu provinces. Yes, of course. I just don't see the point of converting as Mawar. I actually really you uh, still enjoy. Uh, Hindu. Uh, and again, one of his things, again, the crown lands, um, really high percentage of it. I really don't see the point of it, but if you have the, you know, the the gold mine, uh, definitely selling it and using that money to build stuff. Is he yeah, he, build... gets, he gets 500. Uh, yeah, exactly, spent, yeah, exactly. Is he even built? I mean, yeah, he's built this. It's taxation, not so much, but I don't think people build it. He's over force limit by three, so I don't see the point of actually paying for that can definitely reduce the prices for that but he is out of manpower so maybe he just doesn't want to so it's a tough position it, it has to be self diplomatically there's nothing else uh you know nothing else about it so hopefully he'll take care of it um i dare he could, i guess he could have even vassalized it uh because that piece with he could have just vassalized uh either for example uh and he could have probably annexed it right away because it looks like he uh did the full yeah, maybe... he still he still has a truce for three years but he can still vassalize them right he could have vassalized them in the, pretty much in the very beginning i think that's a little mistake it's like one of those little parts i don't think he has the relations if you look at uh, the state he already has plus 41 improved relations so he only he can only get 60 points from that no if it's a vassal Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but hmm. get the 190 necessary one. Improve relations. Royal marriage would do that. I think he can. Uh, giving. The, see, it's a rejected alliance. He rejected it. So that's the minus right there, right? So if he actually lost the war, if he lost the war uh, and vassalized them away, uh, right away, he could have annexed them pretty much by now, I think. So. Yeah, I don't think rejected alliance is a modifier I see very often. The what? Like, the rejected alliance is a modifier I don't think I see very often on the AI. Yeah, but you can do it. You, you can actually vassalize it very easy. Um, here, here's how you do it. You do ally, uh, uh, proclaim guarantee, a royal marriage, improve relations to 100. Uh, then you would go uh, transfer trade power that gives you plus 10 relations towards your way. And then give them a gift and give them all for military access. And that puts you way over um, the needed limit. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, plus, uh, plus if you want, like... Um, yeah it uh because the proximity and it's it's friendly uh so it's he could have done that and i uh, that would have definitely already returned the core i mean it's not that big of a deal it's only three dev but you know for people in the future if you find yourself in a situation like that you know look for uh people that you can definitely vassalize uh and then also in india uh, i just want to showcase this is that for nagwar uh doesn't have maybe a lot of trade power but you can definitely uh, you can actually ask them for uh, their transfer trade power, um, 13%, and other places also ask them for, tr uh, or even s to steer. Uh, and people don't do this enough, I think personally, uh, because you can definitely do that and collect, you know, every single bit counts. Um, and, uh, you know, especially if your star is a minor, every, uh, you know, every bit count. And this would really push you ahead, even if you get like an extra duck in a month, you know, as that's really huge for a lot of players, if, especially if you don't have a gold mine. Anyways, uh, let's go to Vigi. Shut up. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, Vigi, 41 dev. As we talked, <laughs> the player quit. Uh, pretty funny, but you know he made the big mistake, as I understand, as he gave this uh, uh, diamond gem province to an uh, yeah to his vassal to his vassal, which was pretty shitty. But I guess this game annexed, now. so he's going to be pretty strong. He has a little bit of a loans, uh, one loan, but a pretty good economy. He's going into quantity, almost finished there. Um, not uh, a little bit behind on tech, but he can definitely catch up. 465 rule of 32, so that's really good. Well, he's, he's not behind on the tech that matters. Yes. You're absolutely so, right. Like admin, Well, okay, admin tech can be a little annoying because he could already be trying to fill out a second idea slot. Mm -hmm. But diplo tech, you can just stay behind for a while if you're not a naval nation. Oh, I didn't even look at the diplo tech. But, if, uh, but it's, I personally think it's being of uh, Jenigar, mm -hmm. it's really strong because you can really accumulate out of gold because it gives you that trade bonus and you can pull in more trade. Uh, and you can build out, you know, more into 
uh, I think as mid game is the power uh, of um, of India right up to like tech 2022 uh, and then it's all downhill from there so you pretty much want to spike when it's time let's see anything else uh, he's keeping well. He's keeping one of his uh, the local goods produced mission for later. I assume for when he can build manufactories for better goods. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, that's definitely it's it's kind of again it's one of those um, one of those things is um, if this could be twenty percent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I just because Southern India gets a lot of cotton and mm -hmm, spices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's yeah. Uchi. Yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna let's move to Bengal now, uh, and I'm oh, gonna right. be I'm... yeah I'm gonna be AFK for a little bit just so continue with Bengal. Do an intro for it. Okay. So. Oh. Didn't think I would have to do this. Okay. Well, Bengal is really not looking all that good. Uh, to a large degree, that is actually uh, my mistake. I had a pretty bad, well, unlucky, and badly managed war uh, when conquering Orisa. It should be up to tech, yeah. It's up to tech in admin and military. It's behind in Diplo, but nobody gives a shit about that. Well, I, I think it's Bengal. I, again, it's Bengal, and again, Diplo, it's that trade, and you really need the trade. So it's kind of... Yeah. I think really, the, eco the economy is really weak. Like, uh, both Mewar and Vijayanagar are turning around some 13 ducats a month. Uh, Bengal is turning six and something. Well, that's the thing. And so you're you're basically saying that who cares about, uh, you know, Diptech, but Diptech gives you the trade bonus that you really desperately need. Uh, oh, so... Fair enough. Uh, and again, well, yeah. you're not really... I, are you transferring trade power? Can you transfer it from anyone? Yeah, you can transfer it from a, a Yeah, little I can. Bit. Oh, definitely do I that. Can. Most of, uh, most of, if you look at the um, advisors, most of them are uh, producing really well. I'm producing five now. I was producing something like two or three for most of the game. Because I've been uh, above Diplo relations forever. Because Why? I am oh. not a very intelligent person. And if you look at my mm -hmm. states, there is one very important uh, privilege which I didn't get. Strong Duchess is awesome. And you should get it if you have six fucking vassals. Yes, yes, I, I do agree to that. And I also want to say you're not collecting trade from any of your vassals. Mm hmm So oh, I... that that would definitely, I, th I think that would definitely that would, help. Mm -hmm. That would help a little, not much. Again, Mo every single piece counts. But I, yeah, I sure. really like your Orisa play that you took Orisa and then you got all of his um, vassals. That's really nice. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the best way probably to fix this economic situation is kill Pegu and kick Shampur out of the node. Because those are the largest uh, contributors to Bengal losing, losing out sure, on Pegu. Sure, sure. I, I would completely agree with this. But I mean, it, all those percentages do add up. But Shampur also, uh, <coughs> at least you can do war. Uh, maybe if you can afford wars. Uh, especially if you're ahead of tech. I mean, there's six. But yeah, well, uh, the Pag Pagu one will be a very good play. I agree. Yeah, the bigger the bigger issue in war was that my vassals weren't moving. I think I fucked up the AI by declaring simultaneous wars in Nepal, mm -hmm. in um, Tibet, I mean, mm -hmm. and the AI decided not to move again in during wars, mm -hmm. during the rest of the season. So I was continuously short on manpower. Oh, that is very very unfortunate. Yeah, uh, it I, happens. Yeah, game but uh, but yeah, this is the game of things. But anyways, uh, looks fine. So hopefully your plan will go through. Um, in terms of, again, I would just sell those tides a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, again, that's just me. Um, yeah, I think you still have like 100 years to turn it around. So anyways, yeah, India looks interesting. Um, uh, I think... Want it's going to be personally okay as long i mean with timurits it's going to be an interesting situation which way he goes and that uh Vijinagar rivaled you again i think there's kind of a from my perspective the uh for timurits will be a perfect time to go in because you guys can't actually ally unless it's with Mewar, but then he can go into multan delhi even Janpur, and form Mughals. 
and there's little you guys can do about it. Well, uh, I'm not certain Mewar farming moguls would be banned for the other Indians, unless... Uh, not they... Mewar, I'm talking about Timurids. Ah, well, yeah. Mewar is in no position to form um, moguls. Well, what we could do if we really wanted to avoid that and we thought Timmy was going to do it is guarantee Delhi. You could. You absolutely could. But again, with his uh, 15 morale mission and uh, plus 15% shock, are you guys really in position? And again, we are on Thursday evening and you guys still haven't done this diplomatically. So maybe this is something you like, you would like to do. But again, usually it gets, I think, planned out earlier in the week. So... Yeah. Uh, anyways, what do we have? Khmer, right? Uh, Khmer, Manchu, Wesui, and Madias. Which Khmer. one? Let's go look Khmer. So we're going to go Khmer, okay. and then Madias, and then I'm going to go up. Mm -hmm. Anyways, Khmer, what do we have? Uh, the states are not done at all. Yeah, that's not. Not only are they not done, he hasn't been selling titles. So. Yeah, so he doesn't have the tech either. He has been using agendas, but his nobility hates his guts. So that's probably events. Yeah, He's probably been failing events. The agendas. Yeah, so uh, one of these things, if you're making four ducats, uh, it's really good just to run the advisors. Um, and I think personally, there's no point of having this. And actually, again, I, I, a lot of people would agree. And again, I'm not, not this season or at least this patch. I'm definitely not a specialist on the estates and what people can do but um because you don't care about absolutism until 1600s end of 1600s 17, uh, 1700s uh it's completely fine to use your estates guys uh and you're missing out on a lot of points you're missing out on a lot of discounts for example i per personally really like the discount of military advisor cost i in case of stability but he, he's i guess also taking on corruption was it ai maybe it's something wrong with this patch let me let me no, go. he's not. Uh, he has to corruption probably by event, and he's letting it uh, go down. Okay. Uh, maybe. He's paying. Yeah, he's maybe, paying maybe, maybe, maybe oh, event wise. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. But the the sale of the sale of Crownland is really important. He's making four sixty three. Selling Crownland gives him th almost three hundred ducats. Yeah. Yeah. And several I, I... years worth of income yeah and um it's just one of those things i think um that he's in a little bit of uh trouble personally and then yeah he with ming uh but he needs to definitely do something he's here. really behind on tech too. he's really behind yes and i'd say the curse i think uh less than experienced player sitting in a more difficult nation we understand completely what you know khmer can do um and he's also uh, the Theravada religion, he didn't convert uh, to uh, Hindu, um, the b yeah. a better religion in this case. So there is, there is honestly not much reason to stay Theravada uh, unless you plan to become the emperor of China. Mm -hmm. But that mm -hmm. seems unlikely with a Manchu player. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unlikely and it's just I don't think it's possible for select players. Um, so I, I don't think he actually owns any non Theravada provinces. Yeah, no, he doesn't. Yeah, so it doesn't look very good. Uh, he need to integrate Champa. Ah, he's already integrated Champa. Integrating. Yeah, it doesn't look. Uh, he's integrating what? Uh, Champa, his vassal that connects him to oh. the North Vietnam. Oh, uh, dag. What what is debug? K H N. Yeah. Um. I did it and then I forgot. I switched. I'm so tired today. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is, uh, I mean, okay of a ruler. So hopefully he'll recover, maybe do some practice runs this week. But otherwise, I have a very bad feeling about Khmer. Um, maybe Feldspite as a friend will definitely support him. But Well, I don't think Feldspite actually wants to expand into Siam. It's not about and even expanding. It's having a land power that actually does something. Um, and nobody really wants those lands. <laughs> like they are land terrible. is land, my yes, friend. But land terrible, is land. They're terrible to develop. 
that don't actually the trade that doesn't feed into India. So I'm not really interested in going there. It doesn't feed into China. So Mancho isn't really interested in that, and he's far away as fuck. Again, there's some, there hey, is. Japan? I mean, eventually, eventually, but we'll see what happens there. But uh, but still, it's um, it's not looking too good for him. Anyways, let's go to ideas. Small recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, his fleet he has like 15 out of 21 ships in his fleet mm -hmm. but like half of those are transports mm -hmm. i don't think you are going to use transports as khmer especially if you have a friendly madias because you're either using mm -hmm. his transports or you're not actually naval invading anything mm -hmm. so either sell them to madias or just sink them Mm -hmm. and replace them with uh, light ships to try and control more of your trade now or you just or just don't don't, get don't do that and ask for a, like a ducket from Medeas and then he does the yeah. thing because you really don't want to uh, invest resources into something that you know you're sinking resources in order to steal trade from your ally um, anyways so going to Medeas uh, looking pretty good he really expanded, kicking ass. Well, it is a really experienced player on Madias. Yes. Uh, the only thing is that the Gold Province is not taken yet, and there's probably some reason in Malacca. There's probably uh, reasoning behind it, but I, usually for me, that's like the very first province I would take. Uh, because as far as I know, he has been at war with Malacca four times. Four times, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, he's punching Malaga for money, as far as I can see. Yes, but uh, I mean, a gold province is a gold province, right? So I guess he's fabricating on them. Uh, but it's just very interesting that it's still, you know, still alone in 1480. Um, mm. Probably didn't have a chance, so I'm not going to even say. But it just, for me, I think that's one of the mistakes um, that I see. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, he's doing. Uh, Oh, he's still coring stuff, so he probably went yeah. in a little different direction. So I'm not going to judge or make my judgments on him. But he also doesn't have any rivals uh, because he can know the Ayutthaya, Khmer, and Mayapit. So uh, maybe he's doing some sort of diplomacy. He has a little bit of loans, but it's nothing much. He's definitely selling his crown lands. Uh, merchant guilds are very, very happy. Uh, and yeah, he, you know, looking very good. He went with exploration ideas. Uh, and again, as we said earlier on, right, about Europe, um, that Europe is not really, there isn't really a colonial power there that can... Yeah, uh, Madias is really safe. Yeah, so Madias at this point is very safe, and I don't think England is rushing it either. Uh, Portugal will not have the fleet to really challenge Madias, uh, and especially what's going on with Iberia. So I think uh, Asia is going to be locked down this season to yeah, Asians. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something like... Um... California colony for Madias. Yeah, maybe, no, or that's maybe a, mm -hmm. like somebody else. I'm mm -hmm. not certain. I mean, at some point, Madias will have colonized everything that's worth colonizing in the Pacific, which means mm -hmm. that he'll either have to go for Africa, but that means getting into fisticuffs with Ethiopia, most likely. Well, not, or, not necessarily. If you just take the south and then you, you know, slowly push into that side of the world. So, I mean, you can always, you just need one province and then you just push out, right? Uh, but I can definitely see Feldspite in this case. Again, Feldspite is one, one of our more experienced players in Asia here and uh, just in Tick in general, um, especially with naval nations. Uh, so he's someone to watch for. But again, if we look at Feldspite's previous Asian experience, which was uh, uh, playing as China in Tick Modded, right? He he did make the play for California, so you know, and for Mexico and all that. So he's crazy enough to do it. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, he will do well, this. California again. is trade he can bring back to Malacca. So uh, I think you can bring pretty much all the trade back. Uh, can you bring Mexico? You can bring Mexico. Yes. So plus, it doesn't okay. matter. Even if you can't really bring it, you get the free merchants. So why not? Yeah. Right. Uh, and I yeah, still think. I still think. Uh, do you need to have direct flow of trade for uh, for uh, not the gold caravans, but what they're called the fleet gold fleets? Uh, yeah. The, um, yeah, the fleets that you get from Mexico. Do they need to fall directly, like directly into you? 
I'm honestly, I'm honestly not sure. I don't, I don't think, think I've so. ever colonized uh, in a way where it wasn't possible. Yeah, I don't think so. He can even do that. But I mean, with the economy that he's going to be planning to do it, that I can see him eventually going to Khmer. I'm not saying that he is. I, I can see that because you can, you know, definitely make the transition of, you know, building buildings and developing mm. because it does have some, um, if, if, if you look at it, uh, at the at the terrain, uh, there's definitely some farmlands. There's definitely some green grasslands there, um, and I mean, it's, it's I think, mana, but honestly, I think he can do basically whatever he wants. Yes, I I, I, I agree with no, you on this. Nobody nobody in Asia is going to fight him, or well, nobody in Asia who knows what mm -hmm, he's doing mm -hmm. is going to fight him. Yeah, and I don't see any Europeans coming around for fisticuffs. Yeah, I or agree. At least doing so. So yeah, so you know, and uh, this this is going to be felt by its game to throw, uh, but he looks like in a very good position, especially with the diplomatic development, which is happening or not happening in Europe. So, anyways, let's look at uh, Manchu. So he's in war with Ming. We saw that, but he has a lot of loans, and his economy, uh, not a lot of two loans. I mean, this this is Manchu we're talking about. He'll just punch Ming for money and get like two to three k money every time. So. Um, he's he, using mercs. Yes, he's using mercs, which I really don't understand. Uh, like you're a horde with quantity. Yes. Uh, so why is he so? Be has he not been raising? Uh, I don't think he's been raising. And I mean, was he behind on milk? He's okay. He really went for quantity, and that, uh, I don't understand the little tentacle that he's doing, especially that he missed the gold mine. Um, so, that te tentacle is confusing. I wonder what he maybe wants yeah. to connect with Timurids uh, and their unholy alliance uh, of Asia. Uh, but, you know, it's a little bit confusing for me. Uh, what he exactly? Might mm -hmm. He might be trying to... Um to close the human trade node? Like, uh, not allow anyone to get in? But what's the point of the human trade node if you can go for Z, Beijing, and all that? Well, you can make Beijing flow into human. Uh, so instead just, of collecting there, you... you but, but you don't need to. You just, you just yeah, they're collect they're in they're Beijing. They're both, they're both as good as each other because they only lose from one point. He's also not collecting in Beijing, and his merchant is free, so he used it to reduce how strong he looks on paper, by the way. Um, I think personally think that's what happened. Because his merchant is free, and he's not collecting in Beijing, so he's uh, showing that he's not very strong. But yeah, the, uh, the play of the... Uh, Mercenaries, I, I don't really understand, but okay. Um, it's also under max force limit, which. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I I, I don't what know. What are his banners? He has his banners. Yeah, yeah, but uh, are they infantry or cavalry? Calf, 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 calf. Yeah, yeah, they're all calf. No, in this case, he's a, he's in a good position, but I think that um, you don't need that many cav non-banner units, to be honest with you. He could have definitely just run more infantry there uh, just to reduce the cost a little bit. But otherwise, he's doing uh, fairly well. Um, so, and I don't... Did, has I, I, don't I don't know why he's using Max. Like, he's got large tribal host. He's got a happy tribes estate. Mm -hmm. he's a, he has horde idea. He has, no, he has Mancho ideas, mm -hmm. which will give him... And power at the moment he takes one more idea. I he has two also points into one. feel that he didn't take any money from Ming before. Uh, that's not enough inflation. So unless he reused it, he no. reduced it. It's not enough inflation, and he's really close to out of tech. So, uh, interesting yeah, not play. taking money from Ming in the first wars can be really, really bad for you. Yeah, because you can always reset it through Korea, and maybe he has done that, so we don't know all the plays there. Uh, but him not collecting in Beijing is kind of strange, so I think either he's, he, he forgot about it, or he's, uh, he removed the merchant right before the save in order to... Yeah. Hide. I'm going I'm going to um, to make a recommendation which is I it's not necessarily the favorite one which is that uh, when you form Manchu you get your 
capital uh, moved to Xilin. Mm -hmm. I really don't like that province. Shen, I, th I find Shenyang to be a much better province if you already have it to death, mm -hmm. because it's got, uh, like, sure, it's grasslands. Well, your other authority, I, 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 I thought Jilin was um, farmlands. So they are the same type of terrain, which means that they cost more or less the same to death. Mm -hmm. But one terrain, which is a pretty mediocre uh, yeah. trade, it has gems. Yeah. That's a lot of money you could be making. I agree with you. That's actually a very interesting uh, like, move there. Look, look right now. Shenyang has eight uh, deep dev. Shilin has thirteen. Shenyang is producing more production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could have definitely been a very good move on the part, but you know, it's. Uh, but otherwise, he's he's looking fairly good. So Manchu can definitely. Uh, yep. Looking strong, especially with his. I'm not sure. I think he even went to help the Timurids, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or at least I heard something like that. So, uh, but anyways, yeah, well, that, they are uh, yes. So, going to be interesting. And he has a scene. truce with Byzantium, so yes. So he did go. Yeah, I remember. I remember the mum. I remember the Mamluks player complaining about uh, Manchu troops in. <laughs> that is pretty funny. So I did not listen to the. Uh, to the crazy Russian player on uh, Mamluks, but you know, pretty look good. At the, look at the culture map mode. Did he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he converted Shenyang. So he's actually converting provinces for more. He's actually, I think he's actually converting provinces for more banners. I mean, you have to do it. So I guess he started early. He started early, but uh, I don't know. We'll see if it pays off or not. So we'll see. But uh, it really depends on how this war goes. He's going to win it regardless, but it's more of the sieges and how long see the siege t uh, ticks take uh, and what happens with the uh, Ming explosion, if it's going to hold or not. Uh, and then what he goes to the wars. So I think it, Ming has borderline no troops. As I said, it, it has to be the sieges, right? Yeah. So it has to be the sieges. So it's a lot of going to be a little bit of RNG and see what he does with if he takes gold if he's going to take provinces but uh, that debt is going to start piling up yeah you know, ming has the unguarded nomadic frontier crisis fire he can take how much money can he take from 2700 uh, 2700 from uh him so maybe 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 do that and then do a reset with korea that could have been a you know take take the forts and then do a reset uh, that would yeah. be very interesting. Anyways, so we'll see how Manchu develops. And uh, me as a Russian player, I'm a little bit worried about the Manchu Timurids. Uh, start because the Timurid player told me to go uh, into towards Asia. And I think Timurids fed that information to Manchu at least. And I think there's something brewing between the two lovebirds. So uh, we will see what happens. Fighting in Siberia. Fighting in Siberia, my favorite. Is Daddy Kill? I want to see Daddy Kill. Uh, daddy kill yeah yeah that'll be they're very very good um will be you know to be honest with you i think as as russia you really don't need to eat into that as long as you just get your siberia you have plenty of land to core and develop so uh it's uh it's if you go for like if you're unless like unless it's the spotters uh manchu slash ming uh you know there's there's very little that would worry me in this situation even if they unite yeah. even if they unite and do diplomatic and they just i won't declare and i'm just gonna sit in dev so uh. yeah i just wanted i just wanted to say one thing uh khmer khmer has absolutely no accepted cultures there is just bad all around there yeah, so that's like i'm not i'm not six percent of his dev not accepted he doesn't is. yes this just one of those things is that it's just bad all around uh anyways yusugi uh asugi is doing yeah, better than Japanese. my Usugi. yes much better than my Usugi. <laughs> i want to say that his economy is almost doubled mine at this point or triple. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. he's decently in debt he is in debt but not really it's fine he could uh actually sell some crown lands and just eventually beat on Korea and Ming and be okay. His main mission is to really unite it. Yeah. Uh, and eventually he'll just recover when the uh, autonomy, uh, autonomy falls down. So he's, he's fine. He's in a good position, I think, here. 
Yeah, I mean, he's solidly on the way at least. Yeah, I'm just wondering how the relationship is going to work between Manchu and Usugi, right? Uh, and the splitting of Ming, because really there can only be one. Uh, I guess you can have two, but uh, where would Usugi expand? The home island? That's not going to be enough. <coughs> Maybe Korea is being left for him. I'm yeah, not sure what if, <coughs> diplomatic situation Manchu, there. Manchu goes for Korea, Usugi will have to fight for it because he was going to be bleeding trade for the entire game. Yeah, because if you look at Usugi, he's actually finished with quantity, so that's very impressive. At the east front. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how they will how they will divide um, Asia between them, and then that's also the question of uh, Felspite, which direction Felspite will stay, because really, if Usugi doesn't expand into Ming, and if Manchu claims all of it, Michael, if uh, if uh, yeah, with uh, he's bringing me a toy, his favorite like toy bull, uh, it's if. If Usugi doesn't go into Ming and get like a really good chunk of Ming, uh, it's going to be a very weak Usugi. Um, yeah. It's going to be like 250, 300, 350 force limit max. And that's and it wouldn't be the first time uh, Felspy uh, goes into Japan as a naval player. Really? He did it before? Yeah, I was talking to him the other day and he actually has invaded. He wasn't happy with the result. But he has done it before. And if Yosui is kind of a dead weight, I'm not certain. Yeah, he wouldn't that's just... that's also a really good expansion path for Mendias. So, uh, and there's nothing that the uh, if he doesn't have any, you know, um, mainland possessions, there's nothing that the other people can do. He can just take the take the islands and, uh, you know, I just yeah. But honestly, I think the most likely event will be that. Um... Wesugi will jump into Hangzhou. <coughs> Maybe. And get land there. Maybe. And then he can probably make some kind of trade deal with Madias where he pushes straight into the Philippines and Madias. No, no, I, I, I agree with you completely here. Just uh, we'll see how the Asian situation develops because usually Asia becomes hug boxes together in order to stop the Europeans. And eventually when they do it, then action happens here without the actually the European threat. Uh, at least from the colonizing perspective, there's only like uh, Russia and Muscovy, but then Manchu and Timur is our ally, which creates a huge Asian power block. Uh, it just really depends, like, you know, Manchu can dominate the Ming and then Timur can dominate India. And then you'll have to these huge players emerge of one another who really uh, don't share a border, right? So it's, it's yeah. going to be up to like Usugi, Bengal, and Vijinagar to really see what's going on. Because again, as we know, Vijinagar can emerge as a huge power. Uh, Bengal, if it goes through its entire transformation, can do the same thing. But it's more of a mid to late game, uh, with, even if it's in Vijinagar, right, uh, to really uh, power up all the way. So, You really hope for Amarathas? Uh, Marathas? No, it's uh, Marathas only is from a war, but... You know, we'll see. I didn't even talk about Loire in that, in that triangle of love. So we'll see what happens. It, it's interesting. Anyways, uh, any more comments about this um, season? Mm, or this no, session, I'm, at least? I don't, I don't think I do much. I'm, well, I think my biggest uh, takeaway take is that uh, Feldspite must be kind of annoyed because, you know, mm -hmm. uh, he, he took a naval nation in Asia and was like, we will be the naval shield of Asia, and then nobody's coming. Well, that's not necessarily true, because you can you can do an invasion, the Asian invasion of Europe, and Europe can't do much about it, right? If he makes, uh, unless, again, we're forgetting rusted. So he can always try to break into, uh, to break into Europe. Uh, so it really depends what happens, I think, here. Uh, but they're definitely uh, worth seeing a uh, non- European Great Britain uh, would be very interesting to see. Yeah, I will keep... The way I actually wanted to try when it was me playing in Indonesia, well, mm -hmm. Naval Japan, but, uh, but the game kind of ended the season, the session, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we killed uh, England. Yeah. So I was never allowed to try. Anyways, so let's end it here. I think this puts the end for our podcast, uh, at least for session one. We did for, so we did basically an hour 50 for uh, the two 
two areas, but I think we covered everything in Asia, which is pretty nice. Anyway, it's only a solid introduction. Yes, this is an introduction to the season, so we'll see what happens. Anyways, Rob, thank you for joining. And thank for you guys. Me. Yeah, and hopefully we'll do more podcasts in the future. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching, and hopefully this was informative about the current situation uh, in Asia and the possible developments that could occur. Thank you.